Hi folks, here Eduardo Bolsonaro, most voted ever congressman in the history of Brazil, and also son of the former president Jair Bolsonaro. And here we're going to talk what the world needs to know. I know his son, and that's probably why they did it. Brazilian Chamber of Deputies, Eduardo Bolsonaro. He's a brilliant, wonderful young man. He did it. He's outstanding. I'm very happy with that appointment. The son of the president who has been fantastic. Would you please stand up? The job you've done during a very tough period of time is just fantastic. Unfortunately, we don't have good news from Brazil. The regime go steps forward trying to kill the opposition movement, just like what happened in Venezuela and also in Nicaragua. It's the same style. When they cannot compete against oppositors that go to the streets like Jerry Bolsonaro, together with a lot of followers, not only on the streets but also in social media, they use the courts. Today in Brazil, we are seeing a huge operation of the Brazilian FBI, we call here the federal police, against Bolsonaro and the people very close to him. There are more than 30 warranties order coming from the Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Moraes that arrested at least two of close assistants of Bolsonaro and a lot of orders against the former ministers or former commander of forces like the Marines in Brazil that are receiving the federal police at their houses and giving their cell phones, notebooks, and the police officers doing some searches inside of their houses. And it is happening again one day after of a huge demonstration of power of Jair Bolsonaro. Yesterday, on February 7th, Jair Bolsonaro went to the streets in the city of São Sebastião, on the coast of the São Paulo state, where he was supposed to be listened in an investigation in the FBI station, because the FBI is doing an investigation against Bolsonaro, because there is a video where people, is where they are investigating if it was Bolsonaro or not, too close of a whale. Yes, Bolsonaro, they are accusing Bolsonaro that maybe he was in a jet ski on the sea and he got too close of a whale, where in Brazil it become a crime because you cannot be so close from a whale because you can disturb the whale. Now, I will read the law for you, all right? Uh, the law number 7643 from the year of 1987. If you disturb intentionally a species of cetaceous whales, you can have from two until five years in jail, all right? From two until five years in jail, if you disturb a whale. But the thing is, if it was Bolsonaro or not, there is a kind of tourism that gets the tourists put then in a boat and go around on the sea to the tourists to they watch the whales, just like bird watching or any other kind of animal watching. They have safaris in Africa, for example. Here in Brazil, we have this kind of watching because the whales, they go from the north to the south every year doing migrations in the sea. So this is very normal. It attracted the, the attention of the public, so people pay to do that. But for Bolsonaro, <laughs> things happen different. So at this city, federal police were waiting Bolsonaro in the police station. When they saw that people were organizing a protest in favor of Bolsonaro, the FBI, the federal police, they changed the date to hear, to hear Bolsonaro in this situation, to get his deployment. But 
Bolsonaro said, I'm going anyway because people is telling each other should they go to the streets in a peaceful protest in favor of my name, so I go there. And he did go. It was yesterday. Today, FBI knocked on the Bolsonaro's door in Angra dos Reis, where he has a house, a beach house, and tried to get his passport. But his passport is in Brasilia, so what Bolsonaro is doing right now, he's sending an assistant to come to Brasilia, the capital, get the passport and give to the Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Moraes. And this is not the first time that happened something like that. One or two, two weeks ago, actually, on January 28th, a Sunday night, better evening, it was the date that Bolsonaro came back again doing a big live streaming on social media, mainly in my YouTube channel and also in Bolsonaro's YouTube channel. It was huge. It was easily more than half a million people watching Bolsonaro by social media only at the same time. It was huge because it was 88 zero times more than the audience that Lula da Silva, the current president, is used to have during his weekly live streaming, which was so much failed that Lula stopped. He quit with this weekly live streaming. On the other hand, you have Bolsonaro with 80 times more viewers, viewers simultaneously watching Bolsonaro. Sometimes I even ask myself, how can someone with this huge support from the people, right after, we are talking that one year after the election, when the leader, when the one that won the elections, cannot go even to the streets, or when he goes to the streets, when, like he did in the city of Belfort Roxo, close of the Rio de Janeiro city, the mayor of the city, said it was a holiday, so the public employees could go to the streets to receive Lula. Even distributing some foods, apples and bananas, yes, man, that's true. The images are everywhere in the internet. You can see that. Thanks God we still have some freedom on the internet because depending from the mainstream media, <laughs> I'm sure that not none, all of you, or even everybody would never see these images. But this is the reality. The opinion, the conclusion is up to you. I say, I just posted in my social media, that nowadays in Brazil, politics, you don't do on the streets, in the Congress, with a political party. That, by the way, even the political party of the President Bolsonaro today are receiving FBI agents. To do what there? I don't have idea. I don't have idea. But today, the politics in Brazil, they are made in the Supreme Court. Just like in Venezuela, in Nicaragua, or any other where in the world where you have a socialist dictatorship. They are trying to involve Bolsonaro in January 8th attacks that happened here in Brasilia. An invasion, very bad explained, very, very bad explained invasion of the Congress. Because we had a parliamentary investigation in the Congress together, the House and the Senate, for a couple of months. And one of the things that we did, one of the very few things that we could did, we approved in this investigation committee to receive the videos and the images from the cameras of the Justice Ministry in that day. What could prove that the Minister of the Justice, he went there, didn't take any, any kind of behavior, any kind of misering against of the crowd that was about to invade or was invading the Supreme Court, the Congress, and the Brazilian White House. Why? Because they wish that. They were looking for that, in my opinion. Just like what happened with the fire in the German Congress 
in the end of the 30s. It was the perfect excuse for Hitler to persecute anyone that he would like to persecute. This is happening in Brazil right now. Just like Nazi German of the 30s. Because there is no law. If you go back a little bit more, a couple of weeks before, Alexandre de Moraes, Supreme Court Justice, he sent the federal police, I mean, it's not any kind of federal police officer, it's his federal police officer agents that are always the same doing the investigations. He sent FBI agents to the house and the office of two congressmen. One day, to the house in the office of Carlos Jordi, a congressman from Rio de Janeiro, for sure, from the Bolsonaro base. And they went there with only one excuse, because they said that in the cell phones arrested during the January 8th, one of the cell phones, one of the guys that had his cell phone taken by the Supreme Court, he called Carlos Jordi, the congressman, as his leader. Hi, leader, how are you? That's all. So, it was enough in the mind of Alexandre de Moraes to maybe have an investigation against this congressman because maybe he could be the leader of the whole January 8 things. That in the end of the day, we all know that it was a process that went far away. Nothing more than that. No one can do a coup, change the power in a Sunday even more during January, where everybody is outside of Brazilia, congressmen, presidents, justice of the Supreme Court, all the bureaucrats of Brasilia, they are having vacations during January. And with no one to put, as, put in a place as a dictator. What kind of cup is that? With no guns, no shots, not even one people shooted or shot to the sky. Anything, nothing. No weapons, no guns arrested. What kind of cup is that? But still, they are investigating, investigating. But in the end of the day, you know, their target is to kill the Bolsonaro movement, to kill the conservative movement that born mainly in 2013. And then we made the impeachment of the most corrupt president ever in the history of Brazil, maybe, Dilma Rousseff, that sent Brazil to the deepest economical, political, and moral crisis ever in the history of the Republic of Brazil. And then elected in 2018, one president, one outsider, well, he was a congressman, but outside of the system, not even spending $1 million during his campaign. Can you imagine that? I mean, when I say $1 million, I'm a very conservative in my accounts. Because I think if you get the numbers, my father, he didn't spend not even half a million dollars during his campaign. <coughs> That's why the establishment hate him so much. And this is a good warning for other right-wing leaders that are now in charge of their countries. But maybe tomorrow, they will not be anymore. And you still have a socialist structure with left-wing indoctrination in these schools and all of that is still running in the country. So my warning is the main war is not the political war, but yes, the culture war that will form the next generations. I would like to end this issue, and this will be the only one issue that we are going to talk about today. Reading here the post of Miss Kenya with double N, Kenya point double R. is a Brazilian journalist that lives in the United States, a very good one. I advise you to start to follow her. All is good news. And she wrote today, breaking. The Supreme Court today ordered a massive police operation against former President Jair Bolsonaro and much of his office. In the total, the FBI carries out 33 search and seizure warranties and four preventive arrest warrants, warrants that are also 
precautionary measures such as banning contacts between those being investigated, withholding passports, and dismissal from public positions. Jair Bolsonaro is the target of restrictive measures. For example, the delivery of his passport to the authorities within 24 hours. The following people were arrested this Thursday. Felipe Martins, former special advisor for President Bolsonaro. He's kind of a uh, Jared Kushner for Trump administration. Marcelo Câmara, Army Reserve Colonel, who was assisting President Bolsonaro in his political office. <coughs> and Rafael Martins, Major of the Army Special Forces, like Green Barrett. Lula follows his friend's playbook, Ortega, from Nicaragua, and Maduro, from Venezuela. When you don't have a popular support, what remains is the strength of the system. The FBI operation takes place one day after Bolsonaro filled the streets. The objective is clear, to crush any and all opposition in Brazil. Either you are with them or you are against them and need to be liquidated. That's all for today. Things are getting worse and worse in Brazil. Some things even maybe would never happen in Venezuela, for example. We are starting to discuss about it now because this is the stage, this is the phase that we are having in Brazil nowadays. So help us. How? Spreading this message. Spread this video. If you have a YouTube, if you know someone that do a vlog, a journalist, a fair international media, send to them so they can get aware of what is going on in Brazil, not by the mainstream media eyes, but from someone that's bringing to you in a first hand the news that are happening here. Thank you very much. God bless you. Deus, Pátria, Família e Liberdade.